Hello and welcome to our webinar today about circular economy and impact assessment. My name is Tanya Frazier and I will be your moderator. Today's webinar is hosted by the International Association for Impact Assessment or IAIA. IAIA is the leading global network on best practice for using impact assessment to make informed decisions. Today's webinar is part of a series of webinars offered by IAIA, and I invite you to visit our website and check out the recordings of a few of our recent webinars, as well as the entire library of archives available for you to access um, at the click of a button. Um, you are also able to access handouts and um, PowerPoint uh, slide um, files for each of those presentations as well. Um, also, I invite you to engage on uh, social media throughout the presentation. Give a shout out that you are participating in this webinar um, by using the handles at IAIA Network and hashtag IAIA Webinar. A couple of housekeeping bits for us for today. Um, first of all, if you look on your screen on the right hand side, there is a control panel and you will see that there is an orange or red arrow. What that does is it, ten, it takes the control panel and slides it in and out of view. So you are able to access um, the, uh, you are able to control where that uh, control panel sits for you. And Josh, if you would hit the next slide for me, um, that would be, or, or back, yeah, that one, that's perfect, thank you. Um, then, Secondly, um, there are uh, it, uh, the ability um, in the control panel is the ability for you to um, converse with us um, via the questions panel. There isn't a, an interactive chat between participants in this webinar, but there is the ability to ask questions directly to the presenter as well as technical questions for um, myself um, as the moderator. So if you're having um, issues and you need support, you can put those things in the question section as well. Uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be made available afterwards. Um, and you will also be able to access um, handouts and uh, the complete uh, slide deck of this presentation um, during or when we uh, send out the follow-up um, to this webinar. Uh, this will be a 60-minute webinar with approximately 15 minutes for questions. And um, So please answer, enter those questions at any time through that control panel on the side of your screen. Don't feel like you need to wait until the end of the presentation um, to, to start asking those questions. We'll keep them in queue. Um, finally, please know that there will be a brief summary uh, a, a brief, excuse me, survey that would be popping up immediately following today's webinar. And we really do appreciate it um, for you to take just a few moments to give us um, your feedback regarding the presentation uh, and what you'd like to hear in the future for webinars uh, as we schedule for 2021 and beyond. So with that, um, I am delighted to introduce to you our presenter for today. Our presenter for today is Josh Fothergill of Fothergill Training and Consulting Limited. And it is my honor to pass the virtual microphone to you, Josh, to begin the presentation. Have fun and enjoy your time. Thank you very much, uh, Tanya. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us uh, for this uh, launch webinar um, on the circular economy and impact assessment and how they uh, may well uh, relate to each other and what the opportunities are for that. Uh, many thanks to the International Association for Impact Assessment, IAIA, for um, uh, engaging uh, with us and uh, supporting us in, in relation to this. I'll explain more about that uh, a little bit later on. Um, the, 
the project was supported by an IAIA innovation grant. Uh, in particular, thanks uh, to Tanya, who is uh, in the middle of the US, and therefore it's a very early start uh, for, for her this morning. Uh, and uh, thank you for all the handholding uh, in relation to preparing for this webinar, and also to uh, Jen and Bridget at HQ um, for all their assistance in, in the project uh, and making the, the primer, uh, which uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mainly be talking about uh, content in relation to that and, and the project uh, through uh, this webinar. So just a little bit uh, about the uh, myself and uh, my colleague, our chief exec at Fothergill Training and Consulting. We, we undertook uh, this project into the circular economy and impact assessment. It's an area we've both been interested in for quite some time. We've both got over 20 years experience within impact assessment and we're fellows of the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment, uh, which is a professional body for environment and sustainability people uh, based out of the UK, which is, uh, is, is where our company is based. Uh, for, for my part in it, in terms of interest in the circular economy and impact assessments, um, I was uh, part of the British Standards Institute uh, um, drafting group and, and committee who uh, developed BS 8001, which was the world's first kind of um, national standard on circular economy and how do you uh, create a framework for implementing principles around the circular economy within organizations. And that was a guide standard. And as a result of that, I, I was asked to sit on Technical Committee 323, which is the new international standards organization, the ISO uh, Committee on the Circular Economy. And there's a number of international standards now being developed uh, to look at the circular economy and, and how it links with kind of uh, organizational thinking and, and taking things forward. In relation to EIA, uh, my background, um, just some highlights from that. Um, I've previously done a support grant with the International Association for Impact Assessments, uh, looking at a compendium of EIA accreditation systems in different countries around the world. And in the UK, I developed the EIA quality mark system uh, for organizations to, uh, consultancy organizations to, to demonstrate uh, their activities, and also wrote the proportionate EIA strategy uh, that the UK has, uh, or parts of UK practice have, have been trying to follow. Uh, unfortunately, Joe Murphy isn't able to join us uh, this morning. Uh, you'll all be aware of the, the challenges of the pandemic and uh, in the UK at the moment, we're still uh, under full lockdown. So um, there's homeschooling to do when we've got two, uh, she's got two kids. So uh, Jo is, uh, is, is doing that. Uh, but she is, um, as I mentioned, 20 years in impact assessments. Um, she delivered uh, environmental social framework, uh, train the trainer, uh, training activities activities uh, over to the World Bank a number of years ago and more recently has been focused on looking at sustainable development goals and how you fit those into infrastructure pro uh, projects for the Environment Agency uh, in England. So that's a little bit about our backgrounds and, and we were the team who who um, brought this project to the International Association for Impact Assessments and uh, uh, were fortunate enough to be granted uh, an innovation grant uh, to, to help it move forward. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, we'll talk about the project itself briefly, then go into what is the circular economy. And uh, I realized last night, um, this is, as it's an IAIA impact assessment kind of, um, I suppose, oriented conversation, and that's where a lot of the, uh, the communication has been coming from, um, I hadn't really defined what impact assessment was. So whilst we talk about what is the circular economy, I will also um, uh, briefly explain uh, just what is impact assessment, just in case there's any circular economy oriented audience members who, who are less familiar with impact assessment. We'll then look at what's the, the interest, the alignment, the potential opportunity between um, impact assessment, a well-established uh, uh, kind of tool and in legislation across the world and, and the circular economy uh, as, as that concept moves forward and activities and initiatives uh, are advanced um, in at different levels around the world. Then we'll look into the role of impact assessment in actually enabling the circular economy. So how does this established tool actually move forward? What are some of the practical things we can do? And just to highlight, you know, this, this was a, a research project looking at the relationship between the two. So it isn't going to be a um, 
kind of uh, practical guide that gives you exact steps of what we need to do. There certainly is more that needs to be done and more that needs to be explored, as you'll see through the presentation, quite a bit more, in fact. So uh, towards the end, we'll talk about next steps of how we might enhance that transition to circularity uh, via impact assessment and some of the opportunities that come out of this project are unavailable to the impact assessment community. And then, as Tanya mentioned, we'll go on to a Q&A session. So in terms of the project itself, um, well, it was a one-year project um, and uh, the title of it, Research and Development into the Role of Impact Assessment in Enabling the Circular Economy. And um, I suppose really what we were trying to do was uh, with an interest in both camps, I suppose, uh, from, from our perspective, seeing both the circular economy advancing in the UK, being involved in the standards, seeing activity uh, at a European level, and more recently uh, through ISO, um, you know, seeing quite a lot of momentum built around that, quite a lot of interest from business and from uh, uh, international organizations, the UN, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, et cetera, uh, looking into this area and seeing it as, a, as an avenue for advancing sustainable development. But then equally seeing that, you know, impact assessment is there, it's well established, it's involved in lots of policies, plan, well, particularly plans and programs, um, you know, but there doesn't seem to be that connection. So let's explore that relationship and understand it better. And then from that, trying to identify the roles that uh, ourselves as impact assessment professionals can play in helping this transition to a more circular economy. You know, how, how do we get things started? How do we bring these issues up? You know, maybe 15, 20 years ago, in some cases, maybe even like 10 years ago, um, you know, I guess a similar question was happening with, you know, how do we really bring climate change uh, more profoundly forward within um, within the impact assessment process and, and talk about that. And of course, Western Fisher and uh, the the subgroup of IAIA, uh, the section, sorry, that looks at climate change is, is obviously now well advanced in those conversations. And then finally, in relation to the International Association for Impact side of things, for the, both the headquarters as an influential body and its members, how do we ensure that IAIA is, is kind of ready and able to influence these conversations around the circular economy? So when governments or when financial institutes, the World Bank, the IFC, uh, et cetera, when they're beginning to explore the circular economy and discuss this, what's the role that IAIA can step in here and, and have some conversations and, and be able to engage in a way that is um, uh, is informed on, on the subject. So the project obviously involved uh, quite a bit of stakeholder engagement. So uh, we did some desktop study and review to begin with uh, in terms of activity and identified um, lots of different potential people we could speak to. Didn't always manage to get to speak to all of those. Uh, certainly some of the earlier, uh, some of the early work in this area was done uh, around 2006, 2010 over in China. Uh, and unfortunately, I just wasn't able to, to, to reach uh, the, uh, the the authors of, of those pieces, and there were a few of the people we couldn't reach, but we did reach some very good people. So uh, Darius Prisake, uh, who is a uh, former um, head of environment and sustainability at the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, now at uh, Sustainability Advice Services and advising uh, various countries on their circular economy strategy. Dr. Elsa Zhao at Strathclyde University, uh, who had a poster on circular economy uh, and impact assessment at uh, the Durban Conference in 2018. Um, Professor Lorne Kornov, who many of you may know from the Danish Centre for Environmental Assessment at Aalborg University, um, is, is involved in a lot of these forward thinking areas uh, around impact assessment. Uh, Rusni Silet uh, um, uh, is a, not an impact assessor, but uh, uh, someone who's been using impact assessment with life cycle analysis and a lot of data analysis tools uh, on, a, on the Amsterdam circular economy strategy. And, mapping and interacting uh, waste flows and there's a case study uh, in the primer in relation to that and Professor Thomas Fisher from Liverpool University uh, who had written uh, an editorial piece on um, the World Health o o Organization's exploration of uh, impact assessment and circular economy particularly in relation to the to the health impact assessment side of it and what the health implications of circular economy might be. And then we had a number of case studies um, uh, from uh, Chi over in uh, Cameroon, and uh, um, Arnut uh, is uh, uh, Rusni's um, business partner uh, over in uh, uh, the Netherlands. 
number of reviews to the project and uh, the wider stakeholder engagement, we conducted a, uh, a kind of global online survey and we had over 500 people, um, mainly impact assessors, uh, responding to that process. So the outputs, uh, the documents that we are formally launching today, and you can see the links down there as to where you can access them. I believe Tanya is also uh, making them available uh, as handouts on this presentation that you can access through the side menu. So the outputs um, are a primer, uh, around uh, 50 page documents on the circular economy and impact assessment that is structured in a similar way to, uh, to this webinar today and um, takes you through um, what is the circular economy, its relationship to various things, and then goes on to uh, the impact assessment side of things. There's also IA. IA produces these very, very good short documents called Fast Tips. Uh, and if you haven't seen those, I'd certainly encourage you to go to the publications link, uh, that top link there to IA. IA. Um, I think there's, what are we, 22 Fast Tips so far. So the 22nd, this one that came out uh, uh, was put online in January, uh, but is being formally launched today, is just a two-side, very brief introduction to the circular economy for impact assessment professionals. If you've only got five minutes and you need to kind of brief yourself on this, that's probably the document to go to and then come back to the primer uh, when you have more time. So that is uh, the project and what we're launching today. So hopefully um, you can access those either now or later uh, and um, you know, kind of uh, dig into those as, as you feel you wish. So let's now move on to uh, the, I suppose, the meat of today. What is the circular economy? I suppose briefly just to start off um, so that we're taking everyone with us um, and not assuming that everyone knows what impact assessment is, I will also just, just now introduce impact assessment. So impact assessment kind of defined as simply as it can be, can be by the IA, IA is impact assessment is a process of identifying the future consequences of a current or proposed action. Now that proposed action could be a plan or a project, could be a land use plan, could be a strategy for waste management, could be a project for a road, could be a project for uh, a new power station or housing estate. Um, and it, the type of impact assessment can be, can be quite broad. It's often environmental, but equally focusing on social issues or looking at health issues. Those are perhaps the, the main kind of overarching ones. And then within each of those, there are, there are specific details around resettlement, ecology, et cetera. The other thing to consider is that at the strategic scale, at the plan level scale, or even the policy level scale, it's often called strategic environmental assessment, whereas at the project level, it's often called environmental impact assessment, or EIA, or where it's used within international finance, it's environmental and social impact assessment. And in most cases, impact assessment is there to support a decision-making process. So that might be the giving of consent to allow the development to move forward, or it might be the financing, uh, the, the decision to finance a project for a financial institute, uh, either a private bank, HSBC, Standard Chartered, or, or a um, uh, multilateral financial institution owned by global governments like the World Bank. So that's impact assessment. What is the circular economy? Well, in order to understand the circular economy, I think the first place to start is the linear economy. And that's that's where we live at the moment, or that's the predominant approach within the global economy at the moment. And uh, this uh, kind of take, make, sell, use, discards diagram is, is one that I borrowed from an IEMA report that I produced back in 2014. So the linear economy takes new materials out of the environment, so that might be mined materials or it might be biological materials, but they are already in the environment, they are in nature. It takes those, it converts them through various processes to make something, and that might be a, a physical product or it might be services based on physical products that already exist. Whatever is made is then sold. So there is either, you know, that might be to another business, but often eventually that comes down to a consumer that product or service is used and then often it is then after that one use or after um, it's, it's one life as that product, it is then discarded. And that discarding is often either landfilling, so having a hole in the ground and um, putting uh, the, the waste into it or by burning in a formal or informal way. 
formal way being an energy from waste plant or an incinerator where you know you you might be taking some of the residual heat and energy from it and getting some use out of it but the material itself the 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 kind of intrinsic value and potential to reuse that material is gone because you've you've burnt it uh, into into to simply get the energy from it and um, back in 2018, Circle Economy, uh, with inputs from the World Business Council for Sustainable Development uh, and uh, uh, UNEP and a, a few others, uh, produced this report called the Circularity Gap. And this uh, this was um, this was uh, I suppose inspired by a similar report looking at the emissions gap in relation to climate change. And it found that the global economy was 91% linear, so only 9% circular. So linear is this take, make, use and discard kind of approach where effectively material is really um, taken out of the environment, only used once, um, even if that might be a relatively long life and then disposed or discarded. And obviously there are externalities and impacts on social and environmental issues here, often through this process and certainly in relation to that, uh, that discarding. So what is the circular economy? Well, um, I suppose to give you two potential definitions, the first uh, up there, uh, kind of more based out of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation uh, uh, kind of definition, uh, which is a foundation um, that focuses on, on the circular economy. It's about establishing a clear and conceivable destination of a functional economy that is intentionally designed to be restorative in the use of materials and regenerative to natural systems by aiming to keep products, components, materials at their highest utility and value at all times. And you will find this when you engage with the circular economy, there is inevitably a slightly different professional language and um, there is terminology that perhaps won't be uh, as frequently used in impact assessment. Um, and some of that terminology is uh, is quite bulky. So, you know, a, a different way of saying it is it can be seen as a new way of designing, making and using things within environmental and social limits that are defined by sustainable development that tries to break away from this current take, make, use and waste linear approach that has these global and local damaging consequences. I think some key things to get out of this are it's not focused on waste management. Whilst you might have heard of it in a waste management context, or it might be a waste management company who you've heard talking about the circular economy, the circular economy really isn't about waste management. It's about changing our thinking from perhaps looking at waste and where did that come from to thinking about the resources in the first place and thinking about that whole system and cycle of those resources. Um, there are lots of different views and definitions on the circular economy, but for me, and I think you know that those who are um, uh, taking part in the circular economy from a sustainability viewpoint, it's certainly not limited to resource efficiency. So it's not simply about using a little bit less, saving a third here and then living a little bit longer or being able to survive a little bit longer. It's also about the efficacy of materials. Should we be using those materials, the security of materials? You know, Is there enough available? Where's it coming from? How are our supply chains? And particularly, it's about the cycling of those materials, those regenerative and restorative cycles. It is inherently about regenerating nature, but there's often less focus on that in terms of discussions on things. So I've certainly had some feedback in the pro uh, in the project and the research, you know, of kind of, well, it doesn't have anything to do with nature. It's just about manufactured materials. That, that certainly isn't the case. Um, and I guess perhaps it's easier to think about it in a visual. So here is um, uh, the kind of what's often described as the butterfly diagram uh, from Ellen MacArthur, borrowing from uh, the work of Graham Gartz and McDonoghue on uh, Cradle to Cradle. Um, and what we see here is up at the top here, material is, um, this is where material will be taken out of uh, the natural environment. So there are finite materials and what the, um, the linear process is taking those out, making them and using them and disposing of them down here. So just a straight down line would be the linear economy. What we're trying to do with the circular economy is to find ways within this system 
once we get to the user, be that a business or be that a, an end consumer? Are there ways that we can, on a technical side of things, in terms of uh, manufactured components, are there ways that we can re like share those so that we don't have to uh, kind of return them or change them? You know, we've got surplus somewhere. Can we share those? Um, you know, does everyone need a power tool or can there just be one that is borrowed out for, for the local town or well, not town, but for a village or a community? Is there a way to maintain or prolong uh, the, the life of a, of a material? Can we return stocks back if, uh, if they're not being used? Is there a way to redistribute and reuse them or eventually refurbish and remanufacture? And eventually the furthest out cycle uh, would be recycling the material, taking it back to its components and bringing it right back into the, the kind of um, uh, manufacturing process. But there's also the biological side of things. And these are materials that are, you know, kind of truly still natural materials. And after the consumer, there are opportunities, you know, to cycle these back around or potentially extract useful different biochemical feedstocks. There may be an opportunity to produce biogas, but that isn't necessarily the best way to deal with things, but it depends where you are and what the situation is. But as we return things to nature, there's an opportunity to help use that to restore natural capital stocks, as well as helping to cycle around and maintain um, those uh, kind of managed or technical stocks on, on the other side of things. And you can see from this process, if it's simply a linear economy where everything's moving straight down, there isn't as much need for thinking about these systems and interactions. There isn't as much need for collaboration between the different uh, levels. And there isn't necessarily as much need for kind of optimizing value. You optimize value to your component as you sell it on to the next person who tries to optimize the value to maximize their profits. Whereas in this wider system, we need to start looking at value in a, in a different context and working out, well, who are we optimizing the value for? And at what scale of system are we looking to do that at? So it begins to change our way of thinking. The problems that the circular economy is trying to address are the problems that are um, inherent and we'll all know about within our linear economy, within the current world, biodiversity loss, climate change, ocean plastic. Um, the diagram there is a global footprint network that obviously you know looks at the kind of 1.7 earths that we would use in the overshoot day so as such what the circular economy is trying to do is present a kind of conceivable destination that is feasible and we can transition to for a functioning economy that is within the paris agreement in terms of climate change that helps to deliver on progress across the united nations sustainable development goals so it isn't something that is, um, oh, you just click this button here. It, it certainly isn't a silver bullet, but actions moving towards circular economy, taking these ways of, of reusing materials and, and keeping them in the cycle for longer um, will help us to manage uh, consumption and production. It was interesting, the UN's uh, Department for Economy and Society uh, and Social Affairs back in um, 2018 said in many ways responsible consumption and production um, is a microcosm of kind of the, the global issues um, that, that we're trying to deal with and provides a kind of useful lens with which to look at resolving issues such as sustainable development goals and climate change. And circular economy, whilst not limited to responsible consumption and production, uh, certainly has a, a big role to play or has the potential for a big role to play uh, in that area. So what are my key points uh, just from what is the circular economy? Well, it's something that seeks to transform our current, the current way our economy works, be that at an organizational level, be that at a national level, be that at a global level, into one that's maintaining materials within the system and restoring the environment. And I should have noted earlier on that diagram that it's, it's powered or the intention of a circular economy is to be powered by renewable energy. Transitioning is going to require significant change at many different levels, policies, plans, projects, the way taxation works, etc. So it isn't something that anyone can, on an organization, any one project can achieve on its own, but pro progress can be made um, to minimize natural resource use, to treat, treat waste, waste as a resource, etc. within those individual activities. Progress is going to require that greater collaboration between different professions, a broader engagement and enhanced partnership working that I think impact assessors already uh, often undertake. 
and consideration of the circular economy needs to be comprehensively applied to avoid us just thinking about this as being something for the extractive industries at the top end of uh, the linear economy taking material out of the environment or the waste management side at the bottom ends that's, that's dealing with the things that need disposing. It's actually about the whole system is what we've got to think about with the circular economy and how we fit into that. So moving on to um, the kind of relationship between impact assessment and the circular economy and the interest in it, I'll just go back to the, the research we undertook. There was quite a lot of recognition that was very positive and clear interest from across impact assessment professionals in the circular economy. So the survey, whilst it was open to everyone, it was promoted through the IAIA and mainly to impact assessments, uh, networks on social media, etc. So the vast majority of respondents were from impact assessment uh, professional backgrounds. Over 80% of whom indicated that they'd heard of the circular economy. And in relation to those, more than half had closely associated it with those terms that you see there. So things like sustainability, reuse, recycling resources, but also waste. Um, and, you know, it is often, you know, waste where people link to the circular economy. But as mentioned, you know, that isn't the be all and end all of it. It isn't just moving from waste to recycling. It's far more than that. Interestingly, you know, for a survey that was sent out by, you know, a, a, a chap sat in uh, uh, over here in the UK um, you know it was responded to by people from over 83 different countries over two-thirds of those people had found interest in the circular economy amongst those they were working with I think around 20% it had been a conversation uh, with uh, impact assessment colleagues which isn't surprising but for about 10% they'd had conversations uh, with uh, interest in circular economy with government contacts another 10% with business or industry contacts if you consider 10% you know is, is still you know around um, around 50 respondents that's a, that's a good number of people you know, talking about impact assessment, talking about circular economy out there in practice. And half of those respondents came from the following 10 countries. So Australia, Canada, Kenya, India, Nigeria, South Africa, Spain, Uganda, uh, the UK and the US. So that's across four continents. So I think, you know, it shows this isn't something that's just, you know, particularly of interest to perhaps the European Commission, who've, you know, had uh, quite a lot of discussions and a roadmap for circular economy for a while. And equally, while we didn't get a huge amount of response, uh, perhaps from, from China and Japan, there's certainly a lot of engagement from China, Japan, South America, uh, Brazil, for example, in um, the ISO technical committee on the circular economy. So, you know, there really is global interest in the opportunities around the circular economy. If you do searches on LinkedIn or, or on uh, other social media platforms, you'll certainly easily find you know, things going on in Chile, things going on in, in countries all over the world. So quite a lot of interest, quite a lot of recognition from impact assessment professionals. But then when we look at perhaps more of the conversations that those professionals are having, the communication that's going on, uh, we begin to see that actually um, perhaps there's a lack of consideration, a lack of discussion going on in the, in the more formal community sense of things. So one example of this comes from um, the impact assessment, the IAIA's conferences. So the conferences run annually, when, when there isn't a COVID epidemic, unfortunately 2020 uh, in Seville uh, did have to be delayed, but is now coming back as an online conference in May. Uh, I've already signed up. I'll be talking about the circular economy there. Please do join us. Um, but uh, the five years before that, from 2015 to 2019, this is a conference with roughly a thousand people attending each year. There's roughly 350 sessions, papers or posters presented at each conference. So across those five years, there's roughly 1,750 different sessions, papers and posters. Only three of them had an abstract that referred to the circular economy. Only 30 of them actually discussed waste and waste management. And in most cases, that was referenced to perhaps a wastewater facility or a waste management facility or strategy that had undergone an EIA or a strategic environmental assessment. And the results of that case study were being presented. So very little, and then the other terms you can see there uh, relate are terms that may relate to the circular economy or, or be be um, kind of parallel streams uh, or of thoughts that 
that are similar to the circular economy. So you can see whilst the, the interest of the previous slide, 80% of those who'd responded indicating they'd heard of the circular economy, actually very little conversation going on within professional practice about it. Uh, and similarly was, uh, was the fact perhaps a few years ago for the SDGs and prior to that, you know, maybe 10 years ago on, on climate change. So you know, this is something we need to look at these big issues. How do we discuss them and tackle them to really advance practice? So, yeah, th those those are just the logos for for the conferences. Um, I should have brought those up slightly earlier, um, you know. But it is it is worth um, recognising. This is also similar within impact assessment journals as well that was looked at as part of the research. So it is perhaps something we need to to look at uh, and discuss more openly as a community uh, in order to advance things. We then went to look and say, well, is, is there a relationship between impact assessments, uh, particularly, and some of these circular economy principles? And I think it's very fair to say, you know, you go out online, type in circular economy principles, you'll get a whole mishmash of different ideas of circular economy principles. Um, wasn't for this research to try and resolve that. What we chose to do, I guess, partly because of our familiarity with the British standard, but also because that had been consulted upon publicly and had international feedback as that standard was being developed, and is now uh, the principles within it are being thought about and considered uh, within the ISO process of developing international standards on the circular economy. We thought we'd focus on those six principles uh, that are set out on that standard. And I suppose you could take this is almost what's the mindset for circular economy thinking within a project or within an organization in order to see things advance. And you can see the, the principles there, systems thinking, innovation, stewardship or sustainability, you could read stewardship as, collaboration, engagement and uh, interaction between people, thinking about optimizing value, but who are we optimizing it for, just ourselves and our part in the process or for, for a wider system, and then transparency, that sharing of information. And what we found and noticed is actually there's quite a close alignment we certainly felt there was and in the discussions we had with others we uh, it came out that there's quite a close alignment between the professional skills and impact assessor is expected to demonstrate and does demonstrate when they're practicing and the the kind of mindset the, that the circular economy wants to see so if we think about transparency or if you're operating within IAIA's code of practice that you meant to, that you sign up to as you become a member then you should be looking to operate with integrity honesty and openness sharing examples and um, being clear and transparent and not being biased if we think about systems thinking and stewardship the IAIA's 2010 guidelines on standards for impact assessment professionals talk about the need for um, members to understand strategic issues, not just the things specific to a project and direct impacts. We all are aware of the challenges of cumulative impacts and indirect impacts that we need to think about. And all of this is meant to contribute to a wider knowledge of sustainability and stewardship. So there is quite a strong alignment and you can read more about that uh, within the primer. Uh, just looking at the time, I do need to crack on the pace a little bit. So the primer goes on to talk about the link between the sustainable development goals and impact assessment. And uh, there is a fast tips on that that you can gain access to uh, through that link uh, there. The SDGs and the circular economy have alignment. I've already uh, mentioned um, the um, UN's economic and social uh, departments and, and their discussions around SDGs and circular economy. Uh, and certainly there was a, an article in the Journal of Industrial Ecology in 2019 that analyzed circular economy uh, initiatives and, and practices against the SDGs targets and found that at least a third of those targets um, had uh, in the SDGs had strong links to circular economy practices, some direct and some indirect. It found the closest relationships were around uh, clean water and sanitation, SDG 6, number 7 in relation to affordable and clean energy, number 8, decent work and economic uh, growth, number 12 on responsible consumption and production, and number 15 on life on land. But increasingly, number 14, life below water and ocean plastic and how circular economy can, can help us to address some of those issues um, is, is being recognised. And that 
paper in industrial ecology highlighted, you know, perhaps there wasn't much link with, with uh, SDG 3, the, the good health and well-being. But in fact, at the same time, the World Health Organization in 2018 and 19 was looking at circular economy and health implications and, and how they link together and using some impact assessment tools. So there is links, I think, across all of those SDGs in the circular economy. Now, circular economy certainly isn't a panacea for delivering the SDGs, but it is something that can help us move towards them and, and be aligned. And just to say, bringing those three areas together, the SDGs, impact assessment, and the circular economy, this isn't some thing that we explore in great detail in the presentation, but perhaps it's an area for something like the SBU Convention that looks at environmental impact assessment in that transboundary context. It was 30 years old back in December, and in 2017, it's Minsk Declaration talked about the link that EIA in a transboundary context and EIA and SEA can have in delivering the sustainable development goals. And with that transboundary wider strategic thinking, that linking between um, uh, solutions and thinking about value chain more, perhaps the SBU Convention is, is an area to begin exploring more this circular economy and impact assessment link and having some discussions. So now moving on uh, to practical actions, I'm just going to pause briefly to take a little drink. I thought it was getting a little bit dry there. So in terms of practical actions, um, the, the main document to look at for this uh, is the primer, um, and you should be able to uh, download that from the links. Um, but this is a starting point, so it's a primer. These practical actions are not a how-to guide. Given the limited discussion that you've seen uh, on the previous slides in relation to impact assessment and circular economy between professionals and in practice, I think it would have been quite arrogant for, for Joe and myself uh, uh, through Fothergill TC and, and you know, being inappropriate to, to push that to IAIA to say, this is how it is done and this is the only way it should be done. That certainly isn't the case. I think it's it's very much in that exploring phase and there's huge opportunity for, uh, for innovation in practice here and bringing innovations into practice in this area. So, practical actions, but you know, these are to be built upon uh, and seen as starting blocks. Uh, they're, they're certainly uh, not a kind of panacea of how to. So the first practical action would be, you know, how do we use impact assessment perhaps in, it, in its more um, conventional sense as a tool to look to progress the circular economy? So, you know, how can we use impact assessment to look at circular economy initiatives or things that will help uh, that transition towards uh, the reuse of materials and, and those biological and technical cycles? How can we bring impact assessment into that? I think you know those skills and experience that I was talking about, combined with other approaches, particularly life cycle assessment and life cycle thinking, business model development tools, and how we look at um, how organizations and value uh, is converted between uh, different interactions. If we bring impact assessment with those other tools, we can really see um, the potential to, to link things together. And there's an example of uh, the shaping and assessment of the development of Amsterdam's new circular economy strategy, uh, which uh, is, uh, is one of the sections well, one of the case studies between the sections in the primer, and I, I think that's a that's a good example of bringing impact assessment and life cycle assessment together uh, in order to look at kind of flow of material across the geographic um, landscape of a city, um, you know, in a semi-live kind of context, and and really begin to therefore enable thinking of how those materials might be able to be used by others within that context, and where are they flowing in and out, where are they being lost, and and that kind of thing. And then also thinking the process of impact assessment, that, that way of looking at issues prior to and the tools that are used, we can assess whether the circular economy proposals are actually going to deliver towards sustainable development. So just because something is said to be a circular economy initiative doesn't mean it doesn't have externalities, these unintended environmental and social consequences. So we need to be thinking about that. How can we avoid them? How can we mitigate them, which is core to an impact assessment process? And that was something that was perhaps used by uh, that final example there, the Danish Centre for Environmental Assessment. In the SEA process, it applied to the spatial plan and master plan uh, to the Green Lab Industrial Park over in Denmark, which is an industrial symbiosis uh, project. There's kind of a micro case study uh, within um, 
uh, with the, within the primer uh, on that and within the fast tips uh, and uh, Lorne Konov at uh, DCEA in Aalborg uh, certainly knows more about that and contributed a piece on the Green Lab Industrial Park and its SEA but particularly the climate change side of that uh, into an IAIA presentation uh, I think so. I think it was a KOIAIA, a Netherlands Commission for Environmental Assessment uh, document that came out uh, a number of years ago on climate change and impact assessments. So if you want to read more, you'll be able to access it there. So there is that conventional side. But then I suppose there's kind of considering the circular economy within our impact assessment practice. How do we bring circular economy concepts into the impact assessment we're doing for any project or any plan how do we begin to consider whether it's going to enable the circular economy and the potential benefits that might have and there's five key messages that i'll go on to talk about briefly the impact assessment should look to proactively engage with relevant circular economy aspects that are in those plans and projects so we should be looking for opportunities to have that conversation and if those conversations are happening bringing them up the impact assessment will need to take a broader systems perspective. Therefore, perhaps the strategic side of impact assessment is going to offer greater potential to progress circularity, but we shouldn't ignore it within projects. And that significance and the way we think about significance, so in impact assessment, we're identifying impacts, we're describing the effects, the consequence of those impacts, and then we're trying to evaluate, are they significant? Do we need to manage these and, and, and uh, respond to them more uh, substantially than uh, just, just general effects that might be uh, the consequence of most types of development? So the way we look at significance might need to be different within the way we think about circular economy in these early days. But in order to enable any of that, the impact assessment profession really needs to understand the circular economy more and probably organize its interactions better within itself and also to get involved in conversations with the um, professional uh, communities that are talking about the circular economy on a more regular basis. So in terms of that proactively engaging, I guess the key thing to think about there is that, you know, impact assessors should be helping to engage the policies, the plans, the projects that they work on, um, think about the circular economy. So if it's not being discussed, you know, what are those opportunities? What might be the issues that need to be thought about within these plans and projects? How do you bring those up to the project team? How do you integrate that in and start having that conversation? Be the change, the image there. How, how do we make sure impact assessment is, is helping enable those conversations and bring that forward, but doing that in a, in a way that is appropriate and, and, and and measured and, and relevant to, to the context. Some areas will certainly be far more challenging than others. And where circular economy is already part of that plan making and project thinking. I know uh, the, the Highways England Department, uh, uh, the, the kind of government road body over here in England, um, has embedded circular economy as one of its four sustainability principles in, in all its projects. So all of those projects um, need to be looking at, at circular economy and how to, you know, um, uh, reuse materials and think about design in a different way and the impact assessors in those contexts really need to engage with that conversation and, and make sure that they're bringing value to that conversation. The next area I suppose is adopting this broader systems perspective within impact assessment and you know this as I mentioned could be something for the the uh, SBU committee to look at in terms of the transboundary side of thing but it doesn't have to be limited to that. If we're going to successfully assess a plan or a project's circular economy effects, we're going to need to apply systems thinking. We're going to need to think about those transboundary impacts, the flows of material across anticipated value chains. And, you know, that is something that's perhaps not going to be entirely comfortable for impact assessment. But, you know, how do we begin to start looking at some of those wider linkages? Where's the material for this project coming from? Where are products from this going to go to? What's the responsibility for those products and, and the reuse of those products in terms of concepts around extended producer responsibility that might fall onto manufacturers? Well, you know, what what's the implication and the thought behind that? How that might fit into perhaps an infrastructure development in the future? And, and you know, working out how these concepts adapt into impact assessment practice. Strategic impact assessment, that uh, impact on uh, SEA or sustainability assessment that links into the plan or strategy making, 
very much likely to be the greater opportunities for circularity progress because there's that wider systemic influence within plan making activities. So, you know, not a necessarily a, a, a complex concept to get, but you know, quite a quite a important thing to to recognise that you know at that strategic plan making we are locking a lot of things in and therefore thinking about those opportunities at that level is is very important. But the project level certainly shouldn't be ignoring it. So the impact professional, impact assessment professional on a project, you might be needing to justify to make the case for bringing circular economy into, into the process and therefore growing out of the existing topics in impact assessment may well be a good starting point. Material assets, natural uh, resource use, and extraction of natural resources, uh, waste management within the projects, these might be ways to bring circular economy into that conversation for projects. And then finally, the fact that when we're looking at these risk and uh, opportunities in relation to the circular economy, we might need to shift how we're thinking about significance. So usually we're trying to think of significance, we might be trying to quantify something, or we might be trying to get to a kind of tipping point where we're saying, well, yes, this is significant or it isn't. I think perhaps with circular economy to begin with, we might be more in a place of looking at it in a more um, kind of a professional judgment kind of manner and using evidence to say, well, these kind of activities within our project or our plan are likely to enable um, or you know make things better or at least not make things more difficult to uh, to cycle materials in the future but this this activity in particular or, or these uh, type of materials we're using they're really going to make it very difficult to recycle this uh, this infrastructure project in the future or, or to extract perhaps the steel from it in the future because of certain materials that are that are linked and embedded uh, to it just moving on, as I realise I've taken probably a little bit more time talking, and uh, I do want to give some time certainly for questions. So in terms of next steps, what do we find for this project? You know, it was a primer. It is uh, the start of a conversation, hopefully across impact assessments. Well, the primer has a back end that talks about a number of these next steps, building impact assessment knowledge on the circular economy across the community and sharing it, finding more case studies. Apologies that there wasn't more room in this presentation to give case studies. Um, it might be something you want to feed back on the form and it might be something we can we can draw out for a follow-up webinar, uh, maybe get the case studies from the primer and uh, a few others that, that hopefully come to light as a result of this, uh, this webinar uh, to come forward. Engaging with the impact with the circular economy community and initiatives that are going on getting impact assessment as part of that conversation so that it's impact assessment professionals that are leading that thought around how our existing tool and legislative uh, placement around the world can, can really help this agenda move forward therefore linking that into developing our professional role in the circular economy and then thinking about future practice are there circular economy oriented concepts systems thinking um, you know some of the concepts around uh, collaboration and engagement uh, the way value optimization is looked at these ideas that can enhance and help develop impact assess impact assessment practice into the future and how do we look to build the tools that are going to enable impact assessment to support this transition? You know, some of that might link into digital impact assessment and other areas. The key is impact assessment professionals need to discuss the circular economy and coordinate the next steps. So it's not just, you know, a small kind of cadre of, of those involved in this project, but it really is a more open discussion. And we should learn the lessons equally that come out of the pandemic. You know, there are altered approaches and perspectives around the globe as a consequence of where we are with the pandemic at the moment. And this is going to provide us with opportunities to break away from the negative impacts that are inherent in, in how we used to operate, the old normal, as you might describe it. And this might be a real opportunity for impact assessment to make a difference in, in taking that transition for circular economy, taking sustainable development uh, forward more quickly. So um, finally, post webinar, certainly make use of the primer and the fast tips hopefully read them reference them make use of them spread the word that they exist to your project teams and other impact assessment professionals try applying some of those key messages in practice and certainly engage discuss and share case examples within iaia's online platform on iaia connect at the conference uh, through informing hq so they can put it in their emails blasting it onto LinkedIn or other social media or your own, you know, kind of national and regional impact assessment networks. Let's have conversations
questions about this and I'm more than happy to engage in some of those if people want to invite me into those so do feel free to get in touch um, now moving on to the question and answer session I believe Tanya is going to come back in for that um, and apologies I was hoping that Joe would be able to uh, join us for the Q&A session um, it doesn't look like she will be for, for this webinar I'm hoping she may engage uh, with the webinar uh, the second webinar we're doing today which uh, uh, is, is more kind of uh, reaching uh, the US and um, I suppose uh, the uh, Australia and, uh, and um, the eastern side of uh, and, and New Zealand. Anyway, Tanya, hopefully you're, you're, you're around. I am, I am here. Um, so we have a, a couple of questions for you. And um, uh, the first would be, is the circular economic approach limited to the enterprise level or could it be easily integrated into uh, a global socioeconomic policy as well? Um, very good question. Very good question. Um, and I, I, I suppose I'd slightly challenge the question in terms of uh, the circular economy. I'd say certainly five years ago, ten years ago, it was something that was uh, perhaps more discussed in academic circles. And certainly there was an indication uh, we, within the research findings that you know academics were very interested in this. But actually, you know, um, the response level was the same for governments and business and industry now from impact assessors who talk to others in their network uh, in relation to it. So um, I've perhaps focused a bit more on the enterprise level because I've linked it to BS 8001, which is a, uh, is a standard um, which is designed more for, I suppose, thinking about it on a more operational organizational project type scale but actually the circular economy uh, in general is uh, is described generally as more of a macroeconomic concept so it is designed um, to to be global scale to be regional uh, to be down to individual organizations to to take action so it can be applied at uh, any level um, there's some links in the back of the primer that talk about um, I suppose useful documents as to how you might think about circularity in um, financial institutions and global finance, how you might think about it at the more policy level and how you about, think about it at perhaps more of a city or regional kind of scale as well. So certainly do look at the primer and the back end of that, but yes, absolutely. Uh, can be applied at any level. To be effective, really, it's gonna need to be at that global level and eventually transitioning the entire global economy, but it's gonna start with small steps from levels across society all over the world. And that was what was so encouraging to me about the research, having so many responses from what, 83 different countries, but four of the top 10 countries uh, being from Africa and seeing the recognition that, you know, this isn't just a kind of developed world issue, you know, of kind of what do we do with our waste? Well, let's send our second hand clothes, you know, to, to developing nations. It's, it's actually about how do we structure for growth uh, for economies in the future as well. Fantastic. Um, here's another one. Is um, is there a stepping stone to integrating circular economy into impact assessment to include it as a part of the typical waste management topic? This is to allow to be addressed um, and linked in current thinking, or would it be better to include as an additional chapter in an ESIA that is titled project circular economy assessment, um, a bit like how cumulative impacts are considered a separate chapter at the end of an ESIA. Oh, good, good question. Lot, lots, lots of aspects in there. Um, okay, let's uh, let's start with how my thinking went through as you read the question. So, um, I think there is going to be a case that. that Within impact assessment, be it a project or a plan level, the, there is generally, or, or there is always a, a budget associated with it. There is always uh, a limited amount of time and, and headspace for the developer and opportunity to influence and have conversations. So I think, you know, it, it's for the individual impact assessor to understand the context of their project and see the opportunity to bring it in so if you're working on something that is a circular economy initiative or perhaps is is using some of the donor economics uh kind of concepts or some you know is really focused on sustainability then you might have the opportunity to bring in circular economy find some um 
useful allies on the project team and you know identify multiple areas where it sits across uh, the impact assessment process and then have a kind of interesting professional conversation across the team as to um, where it would be best suited uh, to to fit that within uh, the narrative of the environmental social uh, impact assessment report and some of that might be in the front end where you're talking about how the design evolved and talking about you know things that have, uh, have been avoided or built into the process some of that might therefore be relevant to specific chapters where perhaps you're you're going to enable um, the return of uh, biological products uh, that can perhaps restore and regenerate things um, but in some cases it's going to be much much harder you know you might have a developer who's much more traditional an impact assessment is kind of still seen as a barrier to them getting their consent and their application in and and in those cases you know waste management might be the the way to to bring this conversation up and say you know well how are we thinking about this but i think also you'd be wanting to try and at least engage in in some of the resourcing of, uh, of uh, materials as well so you know how is the development going to think about uh, the materials that it needs in order to take itself forward and you know, some of that might be able to come out of things like um, if the development is considering climate change reasonably and looking at embodied carbon within building materials, um, then it might be a case of being able to link some of the circular economy conversations uh, into that. Because often part of that shifting from waste thinking to circular economy needs to go through um, a, a kind of shift into not thinking waste but thinking the resources first you know the resources are what are coming in and then they lead to the wastes um, so switching that thinking around and the sourcing of it and then demanding more recycled or reused material within that sourcing of, uh, of, of things uh, can be quite important and I guess what I'd mention here is one of the other ways of looking at it, particularly when you're in an ESIA situation, you're likely to have an environmental management plan, maybe linking into an environmental social management system. Now, the financial institutions so far perhaps haven't integrated, uh, integrated circular economy terminology and words within those, but you know, there's a lot of concepts there. And ISO 14001, which is the International Standard on Environmental Management Systems, now since 2015 does have life cycle taking a life cycle perspective in its approach. So there are various documents now that look at how circular economy can fit into an environmental management system that would also apply to an environmental social management system. So it may be waste is a great place if that's where you have to do it. It may be you can't get in in there, but actually in the ESMS process that you then go on to develop uh, in managing the loan and, and the uh, the uh, the monitoring of it, it might be that circular economy can only kind of begin to show its head in that area. I think it, it's finding the opportunities to have those conversations and, and taking that forward in the context you're in. That was a beautiful response. Thank you so much. Let's do one more before we wrap. Um, there is a question. Um, would assessing transport carbon or carbon miles be a useful sustainability measure? Ooh, good question. Um, it has a relation to the circular economy, but it, it's certainly not of, of direct reference. Um, what you would be looking for there in terms of thinking about uh, transport carbon and, and those type of things, what I'd refer you to is, uh, is, is to have a look online about scope one, scope two and scope three emissions. And that's a way uh, that is, I'm not sure, it might be in an, in, uh, not quite sure where it originates from. I think it is mentioned in some of the international standards. It's certainly mentioned uh, in, in quite a lot of practice of, of looking at those different scope of emissions. What are those that are directly with the responsibility of the organization? What are those that are kind of indirectly? And then what are those kind of induced kind of things? And often transport emissions, uh, depending slightly depending on what they are, but a lot of the time they'll fall into scope three emissions. And a lot of emissions reporting will look at just scope one and two. Now, 
I certainly know PAS 2080, which is uh, one of the advisory standards in the UK um, uh, uh, around uh, kind of uh, carbon uh, footprinting and, and analysis, um, talks about, you know, not just looking at scope one and two emissions, but beginning to explore and look at some of the scope three emissions as well. Um, there was a 2017 IEMA guide on um, EIA and uh, greenhouse gas emissions and assessing those and, and that talks um, and has in the back end uh, information around that, uh, that uh, standard that I just mentioned past 2080. So in relation to transport and carbon emissions, um, I think they are relevant but they do get a little bit tricky and there is a risk of double counting um, but you know, if you're trying to look at that wider cumulative consequence of the project, if the project is inducing them, I'd say there's a reasonable argument to start thinking about them or at least considering them. And I certainly know some of the big infrastructure projects that I'm more familiar with in the UK. There's a huge uh, Thames Tideway Tunnel, which is a, a new sewerage system for, for London um, that, that will try and take a lot of the overflow water in storms and store it in a large tunnel so it can then be um, treated before uh, it's returned to the river. And I know a lot of their construction, they've tried to bring materials in by barge rather than driving them by many, many trucks into the centre of the city because of air quality problems, but also because of carbon emissions. And the, that kind of thinking, you know, links reducing carbon with some of this resource cycling and circular economy type things. So hopefully that provided you with some degree of answer to that question. Wonderful. Well, why don't you go ahead and proceed with your closing slides and then I will wrap at the end. Okay, no problem, no problem. So one thing I did mention earlier is uh, the IAIA's innovation grants. Um, you know, this is something for the Guild Training and Consulting has, uh, has bid for on a number of occasions. We, we have this, um, I suppose, aspiration to continue to engage and try and undertake EIA research or impact assessment research, I should say, uh, alongside, um, you know, uh, being a, a consultancy uh, and training provider. And each year, IA IA has these innovation grants. It's a competitive funding process and you can find information online. The grants are between $2,000 and $5,000. The board looks over these and awards a small number of grants each year. And the idea is the project is deliverable in around 12 months, but the project needs really to be able to leverage either financial or in-kind support from others. So, you know, the, 50 page primer, fast tips, presentation, and those kind of things, you know, certainly more than $5,000 worth of work, but it's a useful way of, I suppose, uh, pushing forward, you know, areas for research and, and certainly um, have a look at those. I think it's more towards the fall when they come out, uh, the autumn time. So, you know, if you're interested, uh, have a look at those. There's a number of projects already been completed on those. And just to highlight, for the Guild Training and Consulting was, was fortunate enough to win uh, a, a grant late last year. So we're now conducting uh, research into the state of digital impact assessment practice. So how are digital approaches and technology now being used in your area of impact assessment practice? Do you have any case studies that you'd like to share? If you do, please do contact me. I can't guarantee they'll make it into the report, but we're certainly interested in hearing uh, about those. We do have quite a lot of case studies from Europe at the moment. I'd like quite a number from, from wider parts of the world so maybe if you're listening uh, uh in in asia at the moment or in africa you know i'd very uh, much like to hear from you although we've had some very interesting conversations uh, with some nigerian practitioners already um we're going to be doing this report uh, supported by the innovation grant and getting it to iaia in july so we certainly hope it will launch around autumn 2021 and i'll be back for uh, another webinar uh, undoubtedly later in the year to to launch that one and now tanya over to you Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for your time, your wisdom. Um, there's been multiple comments that have come in through the question pane um, of accolades for your, your presentation concepts and style. So thank you so very much. Um, a few bits of closing details for the participants of of this uh, webinar. Thank you so much for giving of your time. Uh, we do not take for granted that it is a sacrifice to make time and space in your day uh, to expand your learning. And so thank you for being a part of today's webinar. Um, you will be receiving a email within 48 hours of the presentation uh, that will give you a link to 
um, be able to access the video of this presentation as well as all of the handouts that were referenced. Um, if you do want to check out the handouts panel um, in the control panel, the handouts are available for you to print at this moment as well. Um, secondly, um, as Josh referred to earlier, we are going online this year for our uh, annual conference and the early bird special is still available through early March. So if you have not yet looked, please hop over to the IAI website and um, check out the information regarding this very, very rich um, online resource. You can't, can't get much easier than being from home and being able to access all these professionals. Josh, did you have something just, on that? Yeah, just, just to say on that, I mean, you know, th th it's a really good conference. I, I know face-to-face -face is wonderful, but it just isn't possible at the moment. And I, I, w I was really impressed with the affordability that IAIA has, has managed to get to this. I've, I've already signed up, I'm, I'm a speaker, so you know, I guess there's more uh, kind of uh, expectation, uh, but I was really impressed with the price. So thank you, uh, HQ, for that, and, and certainly go have a look. It's, it's, um, it's, I think it makes it a lot more affordable for people, and it could be a really good opportunity, you know, while we are stuck in this pandemic, to, uh, to, to get together and engage, not just on circular economy, but across all the different wonderful areas of impact assessment. Absolutely. Yes, it was very much an intention to be able to make it um, an affordable place so that we would be able to reach folks who may never be able to access um, the conference in person to be able to be a part of that experience this year. Um, and finally, as you X out of the presentation today, you will be getting um, a pop-up of a very brief survey. Please take a few moments to fill that out. It is a big help to us as we um, both reflect on Josh's presentation today and look to the future for webinars. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your day, whether it is at the beginning or the end of the day for you. Um, and thank you once again for participating in today's IAIA webinar. Have a great day. Take care.